In this video, we're going to learn about pure virtual destructors in C++. In C++, our classes can have pure virtual member functions, and any class with one or more pure virtual member functions will become an abstract class. We can also create pure virtual destructors, which are a bit of a quirky, odd feature of C++, but they can be useful in situations where we want to have an abstract base class, but we don't want any of the other member functions in that abstract base class to be pure virtual member functions. Let's go over virtual functions, pure virtual functions, and virtual destructors to remind us how they behave and to set the stage for talking about pure virtual destructors. So we use virtual member functions to achieve what's called dynamic binding or runtime polymorphism. Let's go over an example of that first. We'll make a base class and the base class is going to have a public member function called func. And func will just output base func, followed by an inline. Then we'll make two derived classes of this base class. We'll say class derived one is going to inherit from this base class. This class is going to override func. So we'll say void func. And we'll output derived one overriding func followed by an inline. We'll make a second drive class as well. We'll copy this, paste it, and this one we'll call derived two. So we'll say derived two here. And we'll make sure it says derived one here as well. Now what we can do is try to achieve runtime polymorphism. So for example, if we had an array of pointers to base, in this array, we could have pointers to multiple objects on the heap. We'll say new base, new derive one, and new derive two. And when a program is done with these objects, because they're dynamically allocated on the heap, we would want to delete each object. So we could create a loop to do that. We'll have this loop go through and we'll delete each object to free up the dynamically allocated memory. So each of these objects here has a func member function, and we'd like to use dynamic binding to achieve what's called runtime polymorphism, where each time we call the func member function for one of the objects that this array is pointing to, we get the version of the func member function that's associated with that object's specific type. If we don't use a virtual keyword, we'll get what's called static binding. So here we're gonna say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And we'll create this loop to work with each object that this array is pointing to. And we'll try to call the func member function. Without the virtual keyword, we'll get what's called static binding. And the base class's func member function is the function that gets called. If we use the virtual keyword when defining the base class's func here, we'll now get dynamic binding. We'll get what's called runtime polymorphism. So if we save it and run it now, now the binding of this function call to the member function func is happening at runtime. And the member function func that's specific to each object's type is what's being called now. So that's what the virtual keyword does. Now a pure virtual member function looks like this. We would say is equal to zero here. And we would take out this implementation of the function here. Now, a pure virtual function will make this class here an abstract base class, which means we can't actually make an instance of the class base anymore. So I can't say here, base, base. And I can't have a base class object instance in my array anymore because base, 
is now an abstract class. So I'll change these to two now. But if I save this and run it, we'll get an error. It says variable type base is an abstract class. So if you have a pure virtual function, you generally speaking don't supply an implementation of the function. You achieve that by having virtual and then the rest of the function prototype is equal to zero. Now, the reason why we use abstract classes and virtual member functions is often because we either can't supply a definition and implementation of this function in the base class, or for some reason, we don't want to. So for example, if we're working with say shapes, if we had a class shape as the base class for our shapes, and we had derived classes, triangle and square, we could define an area function for triangle, and we could define an area function for square, but we couldn't define a general shape area function. There's no such thing as a general way to compute the area of a shape. So we can't provide a definition of that function. We can't implement it. So as a result, we could use what's called a pure virtual member function like this. And any class with one or more pure virtual member functions will become an abstract class. Now we can't create an instance of an abstract class, but an abstract class is still useful from the standpoint of achieving runtime polymorphism, because we could still have this array of pointers to base. And we could still then use this loop to call the member function associated with each object in that array. And we could still have the runtime polymorphism occur. So we still like to have this class, even though it's an abstract class and we can't create an actual instance of it. Now we can create virtual destructors to ensure that both derived class and base class destructors are called, which is important to prevent memory leaks. If our classes need to free memory, they have dynamically allocated. Let's change this back to a virtual member function. Now let's make some destructors. So we'll say here, squiggly base, and we'll define a simple destructor. It'll just output base destructor, followed by an inline. And this destructor could be doing something more important like freeing dynamically allocated memory, where if it didn't do that, we would have a memory leak. We'll also make destructors in our drive classes here. We'll say squiggly, derive one, and this time we'll output derive one destructor followed by an inline. And then same thing with derive two. Squiggly, derive two, and we'll output derived two destructor followed by an inline. Now down here, we're using delete to delete each object on the heap. If we save and run this now, let's see what happens with these destructors. We get base destructor and base destructor running. Despite the fact that we have derive one object and drive two object in here, which are of type drive one and drive two. Now, because we're concerned about memory leaks, what we want to have happen is that derived one's destructor is called followed by the base classes destructor in the case of destroying this object here. And in the case of destroying this object here, we want derived two's destructor to be called followed by the base classes destructor. So that way these destructors can do things like free up dynamically allocated memory. To achieve this, we've got to move from what's occurring here, which is static binding to dynamic binding, but this time with our destructor. So we'll say here, virtual, and we'll make this a virtual destructor. This will then allow dynamic binding 
to occur here. And if we save and run this, we'll get that the derive one destructor runs followed by the base destructor, and then the derive two destructor runs followed by the base destructor. So the objects are being destroyed in a way that should prevent memory leaks now by calling the destructor of both the drive classes and the base class. Now we can also create a pure virtual destructor. So up here, let's make this a pure virtual destructor, or at least let's try to. So here we'll say is equal to zero. And we'll take away this implementation of the destructor because that's typically what we do with a pure virtual member function is we don't have an implementation of it in this abstract base class. If we save and try to run our program, we'll get an error. It says build failed. And the problem is here is that when we go to delete these objects here, there's an attempt to call the base class as a destructor. But we don't have a definition. We don't have an implementation of that destructor. So this is kind of different, but with a pure virtual destructor, we're actually going to want to provide an implementation of that function. And it's kind of different because typically speaking, when we have pure virtual member functions, we don't provide an implementation, but technically C++ does allow this. So let's do that. Let's implement this destructor. Down here, we'll say base colon colon squiggly base. And we'll paste in our implementation of that destructor. And if we save this and run it, it's going to work. So that's already kind of odd and quirky is that we have this pure virtual function, but we also have this implementation of that function in the actual abstract class itself. And just to be clear, base still is an abstract class. Just because we provided this implementation for this pure virtual destructor doesn't make base a concrete class. Base is still an abstract class. If we try to say base, base, and we try to save and run our program, we'll get that same error, that variable type base is an abstract class. So that's kind of interesting as well. Now here's another bit of a quirk with pure virtual destructors. With a pure virtual member function, if we don't provide an implementation, if we don't override that function in the derive class, that derive class will also become an abstract class. So for example, let's make func a pure virtual member function again. Then let's take out this overridden definition of that member function func in our drive one class. So we no longer override func. We no longer provide an implementation of it in the derived one class. If we try to save and run our program now, look what we get. Allocating an object of abstract class type derive one. So in C++, if our derived classes don't provide an implementation of all of the pure virtual member functions of their base class, they themselves become abstract classes where we can't create an instance of them. Now with pure virtual destructors, it's different. With a pure virtual destructor here, if we don't provide a definition of it in the drive class, if we don't override it, derive one will still be a concrete class. It won't be an abstract class. So for example, if we try to save and run a program now, there won't be an issue. We won't get a derive one destructor being called down here, but there's no issue with the program compiling and running. And that's because every class in C++ has a default destructor. 
And what's going on here is that derive one still has that default destructor. So even though we don't provide an implementation of the destructor, and even though in derived one's base class, we have a pure virtual destructor, that's actually okay in this instance, in the sense that derive one will still become a concrete class as opposed to an abstract class. So this is another quirk of using a pure virtual destructor in C++. So why would we use pure virtual destructors? Pure virtual destructors will make our base class an abstract class, even in situations where all of the other member functions of our class are not pure virtual member functions. But for whatever reason, we still want our base class to be an abstract class. Maybe there should just never be an instance of the base class even though all of the member functions besides the destructor are not pure virtual member functions. Maybe some, but not all of those member functions will be overridden by derived classes. So for example, here, this base class has this one member function. And let's say we don't want it to be a pure virtual member function. We can output here, base func again, followed by an inline. So for some reason, we don't want func to be a pure virtual member function. And so we make it a virtual member function instead, and we supply this implementation. But we still want our base class to be an abstract class. So we can't actually create an instance of base. So down here, we just can't say base base and create a base object instance. So the class is still an abstract class. At the same time though, all of the non-destructor member functions are not pure virtual member functions. So maybe in the drive two class here, we use the base classes definition of func because we no longer override func in our drive two class and we no longer supply a more specific implementation of func in our drive two class. So now if we save and run our program here, when func gets called for that derive to object instance that our array has a pointer to, we get that base func member function being called. So even though base is an abstract class, aside from the destructor, all of the other member functions, in this case, just one, are not pure virtual member functions. So that's how pure virtual destructors work in C++. And generally speaking, they're going to be useful in situations where we want to have an abstract class, but we don't want any of the non-destructor member functions to be pure virtual member functions. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.